Oh no, you're writing this down. To the first Build Peace conference. Um, my name is Elena Puchlarrauri, and I'm one of the conference organizers. Uh, quite a few of you will have heard from me over email at various points in this uh, organizational um, thing. Um, and uh, a few weeks ago, um, I was in, uh, in Hargisa, in Somalia, with Michele Ledesma, who's sitting over there and is another one of the conference organizers. And uh, Michele and I often work together uh, to uh, help get technology tools to people who are working on peace building projects on the ground. Um, and in, Soma in the Somali region, we are helping um, to bring some tools for participatory polling um, for, with Interpeace and three of their local partners who are working on participatory polls on issues of security um, and also of uh, access to democratic processes. Um, We've done this in, in quite a few different countries, and because it's quite a new um, uh, area of work to be working in, it's critical to have people to discuss these ideas with. And Rodrigo Davis and Jen Welch, who are two of the other organizers who I'm sure you'll meet at some point um, during the conference, um, have been really good interlocutors and collaborators as we think through some of these issues. Together, we've been talking about how technology can help to build peace, uh, what new tools it offers, what new spaces it can create, what new pathways to build peace um, we can have with technology tools. It was through a series of these conversations that the idea for this conference for Build Peace came up. We wanted to open up the conversation, talk to other people who are doing this kind of work, um, and really start a conversation on how we can use technology to, to build peace. So we're very excited to have you here today. Um, and for this whole weekend of, uh, of sharing um, about how technology can help to build peace. The opportunities that technology offers uh, to peace builders are really exciting, um, but they're also pretty new. Uh, I'm certainly still getting my head around exactly what technology tools can do um, to help to build peace. And I'm starting to see a few patterns, and I wanted to share a few of those with you at the beginning of the conference. There's a quote by John Paul Lederach that I really like. It's this one up here. It summarizes what he believes needs to happen for two people or two communities to move towards peace. And to me, it also captures why we are drawn to use technology to build peace. John Paul Lederach reminds us that as peace builders, we have fundamentally, we fundament, what we fundamentally do is um, provide spaces where people can recognize turning points and possibilities in order to venture down unknown paths and create what does not yet exist. He calls out the moral imagination. It's the type of an imagination that enables people to surmount the sense of inevitability that is often so present in conflict. And what's exciting to me about technology um, is that it provides powerful, powerful tools to hold this space for the moral imagination. Information technologies can help us deal with complexity. Communication tools can help us to reach out to people that we fear. Digital games can help us to imagine something that we couldn't imagine before. And virtual networking is a good way to risk vulnerability one step at a time with a screen in the middle if that's what it takes initially. Each of the keynote speakers that you will hear throughout the conference more or less represents one of these areas. Sanjana Hatatuo from the ICT for Peace Foundation will be talking about how information technologies can support peace building. Waidehi Gilbert Gokale from uh, Solilla and Search for Common Ground will be talking about how online networking can help to build peace. Asi Burak from Games for Change will share experiences in serious gaming for, ser for social change with a specific focus on games for peace. And Ethan Suckerman from MIT Center for Civic Media will close the conference with a reflection on how we can create sh shared me media experiences that cross community lines. Now, the keynotes are really very interesting, but we also recognize that for many practitioners, there are practical considerations about how to integrate technology into programming. And so what we thought we'd do is organize the three panels around the three program areas that peace builders often talk about. And these are conflict analysis, program design, and impact evaluation. Each one of the panels uh, will bring together academics and practitioners to share specific practices from existing applications on the ground. 
and also to talk about ideas of how this can be done in different ways or be done better. The panels have also put together white papers. Uh, the white papers are up on the website, uh, so I would encourage you to take a look at them and see what's, what's already been thought about each of these areas. One other thematic trend of the conference emerged kind of organically. We didn't think about it initially, it just kind of happened as we were putting together the program. And that's creativity, art, and peace. Uh, to me, this seems like a natural connection. One of the reasons that peace builders turn to technology is that digital spaces can allow for new narratives to emerge and new identities to be explored. And this kind of creativity is also central to Arts for Peace projects, which use various artistic tools to deliver small transcendent moments to people. The kind of moments that remind them of their humanity and can really help uh, think about a common vision, vision for a peaceful future. That's why we're dedicating the conference reception this evening to art and peace. The reception will happen out here where you were just having your coffee, um, and we will have three artists presenting their work. Um, Manu, who is a cartoonist, um, who will also be um, speaking at some point, so you'll meet him also in that capacity, has done a series of car cartoons on Tech for Peace. We also have an interactive documentary on love across divided lines from Cyprus. And finally, we'll have the wicked tunes of Turning Tables. Turning Tables is an NGO that works with young people in uh, conflict countries, teaching them how to DJ as a way of expressing some of their thoughts. We're also pleased to host three film screenings during the conference. Some of you already watched Peace in Our Pockets yesterday evening. There will be another two films, Acting Together on the World Stage and Blueberry Soup, and both of them will be shown tomorrow as part of the working sessions. Uh, finally, when we were putting together the conference program, we recognized that um, many of you would have a lot of very interesting experiences to share, far beyond what we could cover with keynote speakers and panels. The conference ignites, the working sessions, and the technology fair are all spaces to share this collective knowledge. The variety in these sections is really astounding. Um, we've got everything from polarization and data, disrupting world building ICTs, grassroots cultural innovation, the brain's empathy circuit, voices from the Rwanda tribunal, constitution design in Egypt, hacking the border in the Dominican Republic, people power games, accounts from the conflict in Northern Ireland. I had to write them down because I wasn't going to remember how many there are. And there are many more you can look at the website to see really the variety that you'll be offered. So we're on in for a great weekend and to us, this is just a first step. We hope that Build Peace 2014 um, will, won't be a one-off event. Um, we would like it to be the beginning of a, of a community, a group of people who are interested in using technology to skillfully and creatively push forward the boundaries of peace-building practice. We're hoping to continue the conversation that we start this weekend with a, with a, a few different initiatives. One of them is a series of critical reflection notes that some of the participants of the conference will be putting together and we will be publishing on the website. If we haven't approached you and you would like to write a critical reflection note, please see Jen Welch at any point during the conference and she'll tell you what you need to do to make that happen. The second thing we're doing is we've started to put together a database of projects that use technology to build peace. You can already see what we've collected so far at the link that is on the screen right now. I would tell you that it's not complete, it's still a work in progress. Um, we also are welcoming submissions and this is an initiative with a number of other partners. If you go to the link, you will see who we're partnering with on that. And finally, um, we're working on a partnership with the Institute for the Future to put together an online collaborative, collaborative game that uses their Foresight engine to explore the future of peace. And I'm not going to tell you too much about that because Michaela will be talking about it on day two in a little bit more detail so you know how you can get involved in that. For the next two days, we invite you to hold this space with us um, to help new ideas emerge. And the thing about being creative and uh, putting forward new ideas is that it's also a place of vulnerability, right? You put out a new idea, 
You also put yourself in a vulnerable position. So we ask you to help us um, by just holding this one rule in your mind, which is to be tough on ideas but gentle on people as you go through your conversations in the conference. There are many people without whom this conference wouldn't have happened, and I just wanted to take a moment to thank all of them. You will see throughout the conference people wearing black badges. They are all volunteers, and they're uh, helping out for, with the conference in different ways. I also would particularly like to mention um, our team uh, who has helped put together a lot of the logistics of this conference, Kate Mitty, Chelsea Barabas, Heather Craig, and Chris Peterson. They have been really important for this conference. We would also like to thank all the sponsors whose generous support has made this event possible. And that's the International Peace Institute, the ICT for Peace Foundation, the US Institute for Peace, the World Bank's The Hive, Innovations in Peace, USAID's Office of Transition Initiative, Mercer Corps, Blue Nile Lotus, the United Nations Development Program, and the MIT Center for Civic Media. I actually wanted to specifically thank one person at the Center for Civic Media, Laurie Lejeune, the Assistant Director of the Center, without whom none of us would be here. She has been absolutely fantastic at helping us with the logistics of this conference. A few of our sponsors are now going to uh, uh, talk a little bit about their work and their organization, so I'll give the stage to them. Thank you.